Hi, welcome back to this Will I Have Enough video series. Um, in this video, I'm going to be walking through the math behind the CNN Money Online Retirement Calculator. Um, I'll show you that while the calculator does some good things, particularly help you think about long-term savings and encouraging you to plan ahead for retirement, there are also some major shortcomings in both this calculator and in similar ones. The most important shortcoming, I think, is that instead of giving you a range of potential outcomes and um, helping you understand the risk of that range, it sort of says, uh, for example, um, you will need uh, $200,000, and if you do X, Y, Z, you will have $240,000. Instead of saying, well, there is a an X percent chance, say an 80 percent chance that you will exceed uh, the $200,000, but that there's also a 20 percent risk that you fall short. So I think these calculators are hugely guilty, typically, of giving you a false sense of security. Um, I'll show you how to remedy this this issue and rebuild um, the calculator in, in your own spreadsheet such that you can incorporate these shortcomings. Another shortcoming is that the calculators tend to suggest that you will have a more or less fixed or, or stably growing um, contribution, whereas in reality your contributions might be uh, quite volatile for a whole range of, of, um, of issues. In fact, I think this video hopefully will illustrate to you that, the, that it's a very, very good idea for you to build your own financial model. And in fact, the the work that I do on the calculator is based on an earlier spreadsheet series that I did where I built in a, um, a financial spreadsheet uh, entirely from scratch. If you haven't done so already, please go check out that video series. I think it will be quite um, useful for you in any case. Um, my name is Lars Croyer. Uh, I'm a former hedge fund manager who has written a couple of books about finance, uh, and I'm now doing these videos as a hobby. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. So before you do anything I say in this or in any other video, um, uh, please do your own work, take your own advice. But in any case, let's get back to the spreadsheet and uh, to the to CNN's uh, online calculator. So here we are back at the Excel spreadsheet. And like always, there are a couple minor changes I want to uh, do to the, the main model before we get into things. First of all, I want to make the additional active fees zero. So we assume you're doing index tracking, which you should. And then the other thing a friend pointed out is you point out that this um, formula here is not exact. This is It's an approximation. This formula is an approximation. Um, so uh, that's that. Then we save that. Um, and now let's save this model as another version. Uh, so we can call it CNN Money Retire Recalculated. I'm sure you can come up with a better name. Calculate it. Yeah. Um, so now we're ready to um, sort of uh, get into things. So let's start by let's start by going to the CNN website. So you can see CNN Money. You can see the if you just Google retirement calculator CNN Money, you'll find this. And here you have it. Will you have enough to retire? So let's just look at their assumptions. So here it says you're gonna. Current age is 35, retirement age is 67, you saved 100,000 so far, you're making 50,000, sorry, 55,000 a year, of which you're saving 15%. By at 67, you'll have $1.8 million. Let's make this today's dollars, so it's real returns. So now it's 67, you'll have $883,000. Let's go down here and view the assumptions. Um, now what you quickly notice, so we're not gonna get into the what you'll need um, we can do that in a later video, but I kind of don't want to get into sort of social security benefits and retirement pension benefits generally because uh, it's quite individual and depends on the country. But what you'll save should be the same uh, kind of calculations everywhere. So what we want to do is try to replicate this. Now here you see how much you'll save. So we see you grow your income at 1.5% real. So um, that's 3.7% um, less inflation of 2.3. And then it says we will um, have an average return of 6% a year. It doesn't actually say if that's before or after inflation, but let's assume um, that it's before inflation since the before inflation, the nominal uh, before inflation number is the one they mentioned first here. So let's go back to the model um, and basically let's try, to, uh, let's try to do what they did. Um, Let's start by unhiding these rows. Unhide. 
Um, and we start at age 35 and we care about up till age. Actually, I think what we want to do is we want to do it up until the end of age 66. So that assuming they do beginning of the period 35 to um, the beginning uh, of 67. So that's the end of 66. So let's, um, let's just make this number up here. The savings here is now going to be equal to this number. So that's that. And then savings at, so let's see what row is that, 56. So savings at 56, savings at the end of age 66, right? So that basically means that you retire on your 50, 67th birthday, which I think is what CNN is assuming. Then we can go down here and delete the rest of these cells. We no longer need them. And we go up here and edit just to clean it up. We, we don't we can keep them in the sheet, so there you go. So now we've done that, and now we say we want to start here with 100,000. Um, and then we say, let's say the contribution is annual cash flow is equal to 55,000 times 15% and that grows at one and a half percent per year in real terms. Keep in mind we're doing everything post inflation here. Um, now, uh, should we assume they don't? We, uh, this, uh, I'll come back to this over and over, but we basically don't know what CNN did exactly. Let's assume that they didn't do anything in the first year because it's sort of the year you're starting, maybe. Um, they're assuming an annual return. Uh, let's just do it all in the equities column. Um, and when we're working, trying to replicate their math, we'll just, we don't know if they're doing equity or what they're doing, but let's just assume um, for the calculation purposes that it's all equities. Um, so, or, or just doing that column, they assume zero risk, which is obviously a dramatically wrong assumption. Um, and then they assume, in this case, let's just make it 0% equities. Now, here you have it. Now, this is what we're saying. You got 910,000. Let's just go down and check at the end of 6 hour. We should, should have deleted this column also. So um, this is the number down here. I'm just running circles around it. It's 910,000 is what we're saying. Let's go back to... Um, CNN and they got 883,000. So you might say, well, why is that not exactly the same? Um, and the short answer is, I don't know, right? Because I, CNN has not shared with us their calculations. Um, they can, of course, go in, and I hope someone from CNN eventually watches this, they can go in and see exactly what we've done, how we build this spreadsheet. Um, um, but we can't see it for them. So I don't know what they've done. There are a couple of suggestions of why it's not exactly the same. It could be that they use some number that's not exactly 2.3% inflation. Um, it could be that they assume the contributions happen in the middle of the year or um, on a monthly basis, um, and that will impact the calculations. Um, it could be that they somehow take, take fees out. Um, I doubt it, but... Um, it's also possible, um, although not, not, not entirely likely, but it's possible that they made a mistake. We don't know. Um, it's also possible, of course, that we made a mistake. Now, what, um, um, but let's just, for the purposes of this exercise, assume this is close enough. So let's, so now we know in the model what CNN did, and, um, and, and, and now we can say, well, what, uh, how can we redo this with our numbers? And this is this is where I think this model gets really, really interesting. Because we know that if you are generating a 3.7% um, return, well, and you're not taking... There, there, there's no doubt that you are taking risk above um, the minimal risk asset, or think of it as this, as, as, as uh, uh, government bonds. And why do we know that? I've dug out another sheet for you here, and this is the Quandle, um, but essentially what this is, is the treasury real um, real rates, and what you see here is the five-year rate, and the 20-year rate, and 
at the time of the recording, which is um, late June 2017, you see they're about 0.5% real. So I, our numbers here are up, up, up about right, 0.5%. This isn't a precise science, but close enough. Anyhow, it's certainly not 3.7%. So we know that to generate the kind of returns that CNS suggests, you're going to have to take risk. How much risk? Well, let's, let's just keep the 3.7% in mind. We'll hard code it and write it here, 3.7%. And we know from earlier work that, you know, a, our assumptions on, we can go into this, but our assumption on equities is about right, that you will have a CAGR of 4.5% um, real. Um, that's based off several hundred years of history of equity returns. And you'll have a real return, as a good assumption, on your government bond portfolio. Um, of 0.5%. Of so we can calculate what kind of equity versus uh, treasury bond split you'd have to have to, to match the 3.7% expected compounding rate. Now, um, you know, the way that works out is you have to figure out how much is 3.7% return on the range between these two, which is so it's 0.8 from 4.5 or so. So it's 0.8 over a 4% difference, which is 80-20. Uh, so this will be an 80% equity portfolio and a 20% minimum risk portfolio. So that's essential to get 3.7%. Let's put that down there. And then we also know that equities are obviously not riskless. Let's put a 20% standard deviation. So now we sort of recreated um, CNS. Let's delete this because it's kind of... Um, out there, but now we've recreated a portfolio that takes the kind of risk that you need to take to get to a 3.7% um, expected return. You need to have 20% minimal risk asset and 80% equities with these assumptions on minimal risk asset and equities, and then it, at a 20% standard deviation on equities is a pretty reasonable assumption. So what, let's rerun this, uh, the, the data table. Oh, I should have changed one other thing in the data table. We don't actually have a 20% case. So let's just go down and make one of these a 20% minimal risk asset case. Rerun this. It's interesting, by the way, uh, you can see out here in this table what the range of outcomes is going to be if you had created all equities. You can see this is a, like, there are a lot of cases here where you end up in, in a lot of trouble. But here you have here you have a range. Now, now we're beginning to say, well, to take the kind of risk um, that you need to take to generate the kind of returns that CNN um, uh, suggests you'll generate, you're going to have a broad range of outcomes. So I think these kind of financial models give a very false sense of security because they say you will for sure have this number. You won't for sure have it. Let's go down here and make this, say, 800,000. If you go back to the CNN site uh, up here, you see, you know, let's say they, they say you will need, so you'll need 800,000. At 67, you will have 883,000. No, you won't. You'll have, you'll have a range of, um, of returns, and 883 will be uh, an, an in that range. So let's do a couple of cases here where you say one is above uh, 800,000 and one is above 500,000. Let's also say what's the best and worst 10%. Now let's recalculate this. And what you end up with is, you look at this column. So basically it's saying that in 65% of the cases you'll have above um, 800,000, but that's in 35% of the cases you'll fall short. So, you know, they say here, again, come back to the model, you will have 883% uh, $1,000. And I'm saying, in 65% of the cases, you will have above 800,000. We can make it 883,000. So we can only sort of check our math. They can check ours. That's a bit unfair. But, um, you know, even in, I mean, CNN, I don't want to belittle them in any way because I do think they're doing a lot of good work. They're, they're giving you a super easy to use calculator. They are um, giving you a sense of direction and showing you the importance of, of savings. But but please, please uh, don't stop there. You're also seeing what you're really saying is there's a 10% chance that you end up 
at 445,000 or less, there's also a 10% chance that you that you end up with you know two, almost two and a half million dollars. So you you know you're not um, uh, you know you, you're not going to be in any kind of trouble. Um, their model doesn't say anything about fees. Um, you know I assume. They're, they're not taking out fees. If they were, if the three point seven percent was after fees, they would have to actually assume even a higher equity proportion, which would mean even a broader range of outcomes. Um, now, if you wanted to go like CNN and say, well, for sure you will have an amount, you have to go over in this column. This is the minimal risk assets. You will, so you, know, you see, you're for sure going to fall short. You're at four hundred eighty, sorry, four hundred seventy thousand. Look at CNN. They said you will have 883. No, you won't. You will have 470,000. How do I know that? I know that because I know the yield curve and I know that you're generating roughly 0.5% real return um, a year. And I know how much they're putting in a year and I'm recreating that and that spits out 470,000. So Keep this in mind. This is very, very important. There's, you know, of course, there's no such thing as a zero risk asset. So it's a, you know, as I've discussed earlier, it's an approximation to use a zero standard deviation, but close enough. Um, but I think what I explained here is this: this is the perfect reason for you to make your own model to understand how this works um, and and understand the broad range of outcomes. Um, now. Um, you know, I, another thing that the model doesn't do, which I think is super important, um, is the model doesn't allow for any kind of, I've highlighted here, but any kind of variance in your contribution. In reality, life doesn't work that way. You're going to have variance. You're going to have years where you can't contribute very much, either because of specific bad luck for you, or maybe it's because the world around you was a bad place. Um, we've built that into the model. Um, you've zeroed it out here, but in reality, you want to account for that. You want to account that there's a risk that things don't go to plan. Um, so again, this is super important stuff. Don't ignore it. Let me just um, recalculate. I want to just show you the fees just because we have it right here. Let's use the median case. Um, so this is passive management, edit, pay special. Uh, values and then do the 1.75 is what we've in the past said is sort of a reasonable estimate of um, of what the uh, active management fees would be so let's edit paste special and values okay <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me right you you essentially as uh, this this version came out looking a little funny but you're basically saying you'll get about a third of your active assets will 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 go up into fees. You can see these numbers down here, um, but that's just that's just crazy. So again, check out other videos I've made about this. If you can't beat the market, don't pay for active management. Buy a broad, cheap index tracker. Now CNN might say, oh, you shouldn't just buy uh, treasuries and equities. Um, you should add other asset classes. Um, I'd say yes, um, that makes the modeling much, much harder because you introduce um, a correlation between the asset classes. Correlation is not a constant number, a correlation and covariance. Um, and in fact, it tends to go up dramatically um, as, as um, in, in terrible markets. And therefore, I think it introduces a false sense of security. Um, but, and, and, and besides the equities I'm talking about here, again, check out other videos. I really think you should buy broad, as broad and cheap a portfolio as you can, which um, is the World Equity Index Tracker. Um, so do that. Um, I think in reality, though, uh, th that's a plenty broadly diversified portfolio. You're talking uh, you know, in many countries or across the globe. So, so I don't really buy that you, you would massively increase your risk return profile by adding other asset classes. Um, so, so here you have it. So in, in summary, um, the CNL calculator does a lot of good work, but it gives you a false sense of security. You need to understand that you will not have a number like here. You will not have this number. You will have a broad range of potential outcomes, and you need to think long and hard about how unlucky can you afford to be. There is, a, in this case, 13 or so percent likelihood that you end up below 500,000. 
you know, it says in CNN's case, you will need 804,000. And I'm telling you, there's over a 10% chance you end up way below that at 500,000. How does that impact your savings profile? How does that impact your retirement plans? It's obviously quite an individual question, but you need to have asked those questions because it's very, very important in your life. Um, so, so I'll leave it at that, um, but please uh, comment, please suggest other kind of adaptations of this model that, that you'd like to see and, uh, and, I, and I can try to work on it. I'll do another couple of calculators later on, but, um, but, uh, but, but here is this, the summary of, of the work we did with the, with the CNN version. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that was interesting and useful. You can subscribe to my channel if you want to hear uh, future videos. Um, um, or share this video with your friends on social media uh, if you think they would benefit from watching it. But in any case, I hope to see you back on, on the channel at some point in the future.